So <clears throat> last time I introduced this trick, You look at a histogram of the observations of Markov chain, and you take a subsequence, and I claim that, you know that uh, you can take a subsequence that converges to some um, and some eliminating uh, probability distribution on uh, pairs of states and action, states and inputs. Um, and uh, the the part that uh, got a bit rushed, and I just you know, it's just it's too sweet to blow off. I just want to explain it one more time is that you can show that it necessarily is invariant. So, so the facts are, you know, one is that Remember the setting. You told me you had some uh, policy that could give me a, 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 a average cost of well, eight of bar. Did I use gamma? I think I used gamma, didn't I? You get claim. I mean, you said you had some fuzzy logic neural network, whatever controller, making use of all the past history to give a performance of gamma. So that's what gamma is. And by taking this empirical distribution, and taking a subsequential limit, I get this, this, this probability distribution of states and actions that it, you know, its cost, you know, this is the mean of C under this distribution, is less than to gamma, that's number one. But number two, which I just didn't have time to say clearly enough, is that this is in G. <coughs> and what that means is it's, it's invariant for the joint XY process. for the joint XUU process. Remember, that's a markup process. When U is, uh, has a certain randomized stationary policy, Basel comes in. You take this limiting distribution. Remember, you take any any uh, probability distribution on states and actions. I can define a randomized policy, and the way I do that is Bayes' rule. The probability of u given x is the probability of u and x divided by the probability of x. So remember, pi infinity was a marginal of the m infinity. It's so simple and, and, and it just takes some notation to make it clear. And so I just wanted to spend 10 minutes and try again, you know, because it's, it's, a, it's a useful trick. Because a lot of, I just thought, there were so many questions after class and I know I rushed that too much. So why is this invariant for the, the pair process? So let, let's just see this again. Those are the two things I wanted to do today. I want to clarify why it is that, that uh, this, this limiting distribution has to be invariant for the joint process X and U. Um, and, uh, and then I also want to get into some algorithms. I'm going to talk about uh, how you can use these LP approaches for non-standard control problems. So I'm not going to say much about that. But I want to clarify this. Okay. So 
Remember, I claimed that, the first I just said is that this goes to this. I did last time. I mean, I said a whole bunch of things are the same thing, basically. That if I claim that this average converges as I go to infinity, it's a little bit different. I said, well, let's go from, if I go from, uh, instead of 0 to, to n, if I go from 1 to n, is it going to make any difference? I'm divided by some going to infinity. If I throw away one term, 1 over ni is going to 0. Well, here I've also added one term. Well, who cares? 1 over ni goes to 0. So these two guys, the difference between these two is 2 over, at most, 2 divided by ni. So if that converges, that converges. Right? Right. And also it implies that 1 over ni that if I take any function g which is bounded um, as a function of x and u, that average is going to converge to this, this, uh, this average, okay? So going from here to here, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a counting. It's not too much. All right. All right. Now when I say that I want this guy to be invariant, what do I mean? I think it's got a little confusing last time. <clears throat> and if you look at 9.2.7 of the book, you'll see this laid out very, very slowly. You know, and that's what I was doing a bit too quickly last time. But here's the trick. Um, let's look at the conditional expectation of any, geez, any, it's like just any test function. And I want to, I'm going to define a new function of x and u, which is the conditional expectation of g one step in the future, given x and u. Just another function on state space. Okay, it doesn't depend on time, because this is, this is all a, x comma u is going to be a, a, a controlled Markov chain, you know, under this uh, stationary policy. Um, all right, so there it is. There's, a, there's an x here. And uh, what do I want to show? Well, I want to show that um, I want to show that the average of any function g at a gamma infinity is precisely the same as uh, g1 at a, a gamma infinity. It's a definition of invariance. Because all this is is like pg for the bivariate Markov chain. 
initial expectation of G of a Markov chain one step in the future, given the past, that's a transition matrix applied to G. And so this is like pi P equals pi. But it's just for the bivariate Markov chain. You know, that, that's what's different. And this is what's, you know, so you've got, you've got to get that in your head. If a bivariate chain, X and U together forms a Markov chain. And uh, that's, the, that's the transition. This, this, is a, this is exactly like PG. It's just the notation's cumbersome because we've gone from a Markov chain X to the Markov chain XU. You know, that's, it's all, this whole subject is just plagued by notation. There's nothing you can do about it. All right, so um, anyway, so how do you show that? It's a little bit of math, you know. It's a tiny bit of math. And it's, what is the one more step of math you need? You need to replace this average by an average of a G1. And that's the next clue. this off. next claim. Now, this gives us this, like that. You know? <laughs> now, why, is, why should this be true? And this takes a little more thought, but it's something we've played around with before. Uh, G is a conditional expectation, <laughs> and XU is a Markov process. So in fact, this, I'm going to call this whole thing delta. So delta as we've seen before. Because of the fact that X U jointly is a Markov chain, the conditional expectation of G if the entire path of X is a U is exactly the same as the conditional expectation just given the last. Okay? That's that's the Markov property. Again, for the joint process X and U. And so what does that tell you? Well, this is a conditional expectation of that. So the expectation of delta t, given all that history, well, basically, I get the conditional expectation of that given the path, which is the same as it's that. Okay, so it's zero. anything to a lot of you, but this is called the Martingale difference uh, property.